All right, we're about to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. But before we do that, I have to make sure that you all know what the relationship is between parallel lines. Well, yeah, they never touch or never intersect, but you knew that back in like fourth or fifth grade. But what's the new concept now? It's that parallel lines have the same slope. So if two lines are parallel, then that must mean that they both, when you count their rise over run, it must be the same fraction, same slope. So for example, if this line right here has a slope of uh, 3 fourths, then this line right here has a slope of 3 fourths. So same slope is what makes them parallel. That's the phrasing that I want you to use. Don't tell me that they never intersect. That's not what you're learning in eighth grade. You're learning that they have the same slope. All right, let's do some practice. So let's calculate some slopes. And they give us letters, R, G, and B. So we can label our lines and our slopes based on the letter. Um, so here we go. Let's do line B. Up. Um, five. Right. Three. So B has a slope of 5 over 3. R is up um, 5, right 2. So R is 5 over 2. So those, while they might look a little parallel, they're not because they don't have the same slope. Now let's look at our third line. Let's look at G. And G is up 5 and right 3. So G and B are parallel. And the answer to how do you know is that they have the same slope. All right, I would like you to pause the video and try number two on your own. All right, now number three and four are a little different because we don't have pictures. Um, and remember the slopes of y equals lines are zero and x equals lines are no slope. So you can't really say that zero is, is equal to a no slope or a no slope is equal to another no slope, well, I guess you could, but the way that I would like to have you realize is that these lines are horizontal because they're both y equals lines, and if you didn't know that, go back and look at the 4.1 video because we talk about horizontal and vertical lines. So I will say that, yes, these are parallel, or I guess I shouldn't start it with a yes. I'll just say these are parallel. because they are both horizontal lines. Now, over here in number four, x equals is a vertical line, and y equals is a horizontal line. So the answer to this is these are not parallel. because one is vertical and the other is horizontal. And obviously a horizontal and a vertical can't be parallel. All right, number five, in order to be a parallelogram, you have to have opposite sides parallel. That's a vocabulary definition that you learned back in your younger grades, maybe in sixth grade, I think. So we can't say, oh, well, it looks like they are four sides and blah, blah, blah. We need to know if the opposite sides are parallel. And the way that we know opposite sides are parallel is if they have the same slope. 
Well, I can look right here, and this is a horizontal, so I'll know right away that this side is zero, and I can look up here, and that's a horizontal, so that side is also zero. So I have that pair, obviously, of opposite sides having the same slope. But let's look to see if line uh, side DA is parallel to CB by calculating its slope. So I have to go up uh, 8 and right, looks like right 6, so that would be a slope of 8 over 6. And this is going to be Let's do it. So let's uh, go up. Um, that's up eight. And that's also right six. So that slope is eight over six. Sorry, the lines are intersecting. I apologize. So eight over six. They both have an eight over six. So since this side is parallel to this side, because they have the same slope, and this side is parallel to this side because they have the same slope, it is a parallelogram. So here's the phrasing that you use. This is a parallelogram. Because opposite sides are parallel since they have the same slope. All right, let's check out perpendicular. All right, this is a little page about the knowledge that you need to know about perpendicular lines. And the rule for perpendicular lines is that they have negative reciprocal slopes. So that's the rule, negative reciprocal, not just negative, not just reciprocal, negative reciprocal together. So here's a couple of examples of a number and it's negative reciprocal. So let's say I have the fraction 3 fourths, it's negative reciprocal, is negative 4 thirds. Make it negative and then flip the fraction. Um, if I have 1 half, it's negative reciprocal, is negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. You could also start out with a negative number. Like if your slope is negative 7 fifths, it's ne negative reciprocal is 5 sevenths because making it negative would be like a double negative, so that would be a positive, and you make it its reciprocal. Negative doesn't necessarily mean negative, it means make it the opposite of what you already have. Um, let's do another negative example. Let's say we have a slope of negative four. Well, negative four as a slope is negative four over one, so that would be a uh, slope of positive one-fourth. Flip the fraction and make it negative. These are all examples of negative reciprocals. Now let's use them. So which two lines are perpendicular? So they've given us three lines, again, R, G, and B, and we have to determine which ones have negative reciprocal slopes. So let's do it. What's the slope of R? That's down three, right, three, so that's negative three over three. G is um, G is up one, right, um, seven, so that's one seventh. I'm, I'm erasing them because I don't want to get to get too confusing on your paper. And then we have uh, B, which is up mm, looks like up six, right six. So that is a slope of six 
over 6. And you say, well, I don't see any negative reciprocals. So let's go and reduce. This is negative 1 over 1. The g doesn't reduce, and b reduces to positive 1 over 1. These are negative reciprocals of each other, because if you flip 1 over 1, it becomes 1 over 1, and a negative would turn into a positive. So here's our phrasing. R and B are perpendicular. I'm going to abbreviate perp because their slopes are negative reciprocals. Okay, I would like you to pause and try number seven on your own. All right, so you didn't have to worry about reducing it all because R and G jumped right out at me as being negative reciprocals. This is four over one, this is one over four, this is positive, this is negative, so they are negative reciprocals of each other, or just negative reciprocals. All right, number eight and nine are similar to what we did on the front page, but now we have to determine if they're perpendicular, so we're not gonna say they intersect or don't intersect, we're gonna use um, our phrasing like we did, horizontal and vertical. So this is a, oh, nope, x equals lines are vertical. And y equals lines are horizontal. So these are perpendicular. So these are perpendicular. I'm going to abbreviate again because 1 is horizontal. and the other is vertical. And you should know that a horizontal and a vertical are perpendicular. Um, now we look at number nine. This is a horizontal because it's a y equals. This is also a horizontal because it's a y equals. So we say these are not perpendicular. Because they are both horizontal. All right, in number 10, they ask us if something is a rectangle. So now the mathematical reason that makes something a rectangle is not that it has four sides, um, is that it has 90 degree angles, and what makes things 90 degree angles is that they are perpendicular. So we have to calculate their slopes. So let's find the slope of each side and then see if the sides that are next to each other make a 90 degree angle by being perpendicular, by having negative reciprocal slopes. So this slope from J to M, I'm not gonna draw the slope triangle, but I will um, show you. So this slope is down to right two. Um, this slope M to L is up, one, two, three, four, four. So that's four over four. This K to L is up two, left two. So that's two over negative two. I'll make that a little neater. And this side right here, j to k, is up 4, right 4. So now if I reduce, this gives me negative 1, this gives me positive 1, right over 1. This gives me negative 1 over 1, this gives me positive 1 over 1. The sides that are next to each other are negative reciprocals. These two 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 are negative reciprocals. So yes, it is a rectangle uh, because their sides are perpendicular. And what's the reason that their sides are perpendicular? 
it's since they have negative reciprocal slopes. All right, if you still need help with this lesson, there are a couple things you can do. You can go to the online book and you can watch some lesson tutorial videos. You can go back and rewatch the 4.2 extension original notes video. You can come see me for help, but if you are confused with this lesson, please, please get help.